I'm troubled with that one. Amen. But I know everybody everybody wants to have their own and they want to be the, in, in control. Yes. And that's the problem. Control is our mistake. Yeah. Because you don't need to control everything. God, God's going to control you. You may play with it, but he's going to control you. And you can believe that he's going to handle it. Do we have any birthdays today? This month is going out of February, out of February so do we have any birthdays? No? Okay. Since it's our last Sunday in this month, uh, and I... I know we don't have no business because everybody here this morning is a is a visit, is a member of Cedar Grove and, and Cornerstone. So I don't have to ask for that. Today I'm going to be reading, sharing my cross. I was handed a heavy cross one day that I thought I could not bear. Misery and fear engulfed me and I was filled with great despair. Then came to mind the promise my God had made to me that he would help me carry my cross and would always walk with me. I went forth that morning with my faith and strength renewed and I knew that there was nothing in life that my Savior and I couldn't do. Together we carried that heavy cross would seem so much lighter. By sharing my burden with God, the world seems a little bit brighter. All right. Hallelujah. But I, I, I've come to terms to realize that when you read your Bible, Josh, and you'll find out that God was able to do some things mm -hmm. and defeat more people with less people Amen. that had a mind stayed on him all right. because the less people trusted him all the more and when you trust God and you listen to God and you understand God, he can do more with you because you're in line to see what he has before you. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yes, but what God was sharing with me simply was this. He was sharing with me that the problem that we have as a people. Now, I can say a Christian folk or I can say uh, whatever other kind of folk, but I'm going to just leave it as the problem that we have as a people is we find it hard to wait. Amen, amen. Have I got a witness? Yeah. I, let me give you an example. Josh, let me give you an example. Do you remember when the pandemic started? Uh, Mike, Mike, remember when the pandemic started and, and, and the announcement went out that there was going to be $1,200 stimulus checks <laughs> coming. I need you to know, Pop, there were some people that every single day, matter of fact, some folks had a sleeping bag next to the mailbox because every day they was anticipating their $1,200. Mother, some folks even spent the $1,200 before it was even cut from the treasury department. They, and every day they sat at the mailbox waiting for that check. And it seems as if the long the longer it took for it to come, the harder it was for, come on here somebody, it, it was hard for them to wait simply because what begins to happen is when it's something that you want, you come, you become impatient when the longer you have to wait. Have I got yeah, yeah, yeah. So we find that it's hard for us as a people to wait. And I'm going to share with you some things about that simply because what happens is being still requires waiting. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Have I got a witness? Yeah. Isn't it amazing that as adults, when we look at our children, when they're little, we, we always tell them, be still. Yeah. And, and we tell them to be still. Most of us, brother, most of us tell them to be still because they're making us nervous. Amen, amen. <laughs> but then other times we tell them to be still because they're moving so much that they may miss the opportunity for something that could teach them, they may miss it because they're moving yeah. too much. Yeah. So we tell them to be still. We tell them to be still so you don't get hurt. Be yeah. still so that you can watch TV. Be still. Yes. All right, have I got a witness? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we have a problem with this thing called being still or should I say waiting. Yes, yes. But when we look at when the passage tells us, it says, be still. The reason why it's hard for us to be still is because our faith is shallow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my. <laughs> my. When you have shallow faith, 
that means that when it comes time to wait for something, we don't know how to tap into the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We don't want to sit and be still and let God be God. But when it comes down to having to wait, that's when our faith begins to waver and shake, not believing that he's going to show up in time and realizing that God always shows up on time. But we get to this place to where we get anxious and we begin to move around and we begin to try to formulate something that was not given authority by God for us to do. Amen. It's hard because our faith is shallow. It's hard to wait on God. It's hard. His time is not our time. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us that a day to him is like a thousand years to us. Have I got a witness? But it's amazing that when he tells us to wait, the problem is when we wait on God, we have to learn how to wait on God. Can, can, can I be a Ricky Ricardo and explain that to you? <laughs> Guys, when you wait on God, when you're waiting for him to move in your life, you've got to learn how to wait on God. Lord, how can I serve you? Yes, yes. Have I got a witness? You have to be still, but in your being still, you still got to look at the scriptures. You still got to have your moment of worship. You still have to have your moment of quietness and silence simply because in your time of being still, that is the time that you can recognize the soft, the soft voice of the Lord. That's when you can recognize his presence that's in the room. When you're still, that's the time you can hear him give you the directions that you need to go forth in the things that you're going forth in. When you listen, sometimes it'll keep you from having to go all the way around when he's trying to tell you to go straight down. All right. Listen, his time is not our time. Amen. Psalms 27 and 14 simply says this, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Listen, the writer's here telling us, listen, he's telling you, what to do, yeah. Brother Brian. Then he's telling you how to do it. Amen. Then he reemphasizes to just do it. That's right. Have I got a witness? Yeah. He says, while you're waiting on the Lord, mm. be of good courage. Yes. Yes. Don't doubt and don't be tripping. Come on, somebody. Can I say? Yeah. Don't be tripping. Don't be losing your mind. Don't be acting as if God ain't never showed up for you before. But while you are waiting, you need to wait on what? Not wait on the stimulus check. Not wait on your income tax. Not wait on that boo thing. You need to wait on the Lord because now when you wait on him, you have a reason to be of good courage. Because the same God that showed up for you before is the same God will show up for you again and if you can be encouraged that he is still the same loving God then the Bible says he shall strengthen thine heart yes, yes. and I don't know about you but when you begin to get impatient and when you begin to move around and when you begin to act crazy it starts right here Amen. Because when the heart is troubled, that's when it begins to sin. Remember, the heart is the epicenter of the body. Amen. And when the heart gets troubled, it sends the signals to the mind and everything else. And when the heart tells the mind, the mind begins to formulate the plan and it sends the signals down to the rest of the body. Have I got a witness in this house? Yeah. But when you can get to the place to where your heart is in the right place, because it's been strengthened by God, because you was encouraged in your time of waiting. Listen, you to wait. Look at somebody and say, learn how to wait. If you don't believe that, Isaiah 40, 31, one of my favorite passages of scriptures, it says what? Faith that wait. Upon what? Upon the Lord. I never seen it say, wait upon your child to give you a raise. It didn't say, wait upon your friend to come and take you to the store. It says, wait upon the Lord it shall, they shall renew. God says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Yes, Lord. Not they might, but they shall mount up with wings. Yes. 
as eagles. And I don't know if you understand that particular passage or that particular part of the passage, but when you mount up with wings as eagles, uh -huh. can I help them a little bit right here, Pop? Yes. The thing about an eagle and his wings is simply this. Whenever there's a storm going on, uh -huh. an eagle will be able to fly above the storm. <laughs> Wherever the cloud is, the eagle has the propensity to be able to go above the cloud. And he will soar above the cloud until the storm ceases. And when the storm ceases, he's able to come back down, not affected at all. And if we got the mindset of an eagle by waiting on the Lord, it doesn't matter how bad our storm is. All we got to do is spread our wings and fly. I'm talking about a song. Somebody know what I'm saying. We can spread our wings and fly above the storm. And while the storms of life is raging, we are just soaring. We're flying like an eagle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All righty. All righty. And we stay there. Listen, we stay there. But the other thing that I noticed that the eagle has is he has the ability in the storm to fly even when it's raining because there's an inner eyelid that he has that comes over the eyeball that keeps any rain from getting in and he can soar come on here somebody it's not even about the storm but it's about his ability to be able to fly above so that he's not impacted by what's going on and when he comes back you notice everything is alright my my they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and eagles Strength is renewed because when he gets weak, when he gets sick, it lets us know that he'll go to the top of the mountaintop where the S-U-N is shining bright. And he'll lay prostate in front of the S-O-N so that when the sun itself begins to get on his body and heal him, he'll beat his wings on the way, on the rocks. And the old feathers will come off and the new feathers will show up and he'll fly back down. Look at Bray, I wish I had some eagles in the house. Every once in a while, we go through some things. But if you can learn how to wait with the eagle mindset, just wait upon the Lord, soar above the storm, and know that when God shows up, everything is going to be all right. Being still, that means you can't have no anxiety. Being still means you got to learn how to be patient. Yes, yes. Being still means you got to learn to leave matters into God's hands. Hallelujah. Being still simply means you can't be stressed out about issues that only God has the ability to solve. Hallelujah. Come on here, somebody. If he didn't give you the solution, then that means that you've got to trust him. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. Being still simply means stop moving around and trying to figure out what God has already worked out. Amen. See, our problem is sometimes, Josh, we go through stuff longer than we have to go through it because we don't trust God enough to believe that he's already fixed it for us. Amen. But what God does is this. This is what we have to remember, Pop. What God does is this. He fixes it at the end before he even lets us know that it's a beginning. My goodness. And when you are presented with a problem, remember something. God has already provided the solution, but you've got to be still long enough for him to show you what the solution is. Why do you fight battles that God didn't tell you to fight? Because you didn't learn how to be still. Why are you running in circles that God didn't tell you to run? Because you didn't learn how to be still. Why am I fighting somebody that I can speak life into? Because you won't be still. If you can be still long enough, to hear from God, you'll also be able to see the power of His salvation. Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, my, 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 my. Yes, Lord. We've got to learn this. Being still also means not just physical moving, mm -hmm. but it also means that you got to keep your mind still. Amen. Yeah. Have I got a witness? John Daniel, God was showing me this as I was driving down the 1 to the 10 freeway. And right before I got to Florence, he said to me, he says, isn't it amazing that when your mind is racing, sometimes when you look up and realize, you didn't pass your exit. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot a witness. And then now you got to go down, and it's bad when you pass your exit, yes, and the next exit is three exits down, because the next street don't have an exit. 
Now you got to go all the way out your way to come back to your way because your mind was moving too much and you missed what God was trying to get you. Sometimes we got to be still in our mind because when our minds start racing, we start thinking of things. The Bible, uh, my mama used to always tell me that an idle mind is the devil's workshop. And when you get to the place to where you allow your mind to just go anywhere and everywhere, you'll find yourself reminiscing about some stuff that you should not even be reminiscing about. Oh, I wish I had a witness up in here. You start thinking about them days when you used to do X, Y, and Z. Come on up in here, somebody. And then when your mind gets stuck into that X, Y, and Z, now your body start wanting a little more of the X, Y, and Z. But when you can keep your mind still enough to be stayed on Jesus, you will find out that when the enemy comes in to try to dance around and then take you back to the thoughts, you can tell him, get back in me. I used to be what that was, but now my mind is on Jesus, and I'm bigger and better. You should have killed me when I was there, but since I'm here, I'm going to be still and make sure that the salvation of the Lord is present in front of me, because great Yes. We got to learn uh -huh. how to keep our minds still. Yes. The Bible simply tells us here that, that, that we have been transformed by the renewing of our mind. Yes. And if God has allowed your mind to be renewed, he simply allowed your mind to be in a place to where he can think his thoughts. Yes. And that you can hear what he has to say and formulate your plans based off the plans that he has for you. Jeremiah said, he says, I know the plans that I have for you. Yes. Uh, have I got a witness? And if God already knows the plans that he has for you, if you can be still long enough, you can get the blueprint to the plan. Yes. Have I got a witness? And I've never seen somebody build something without an effective blueprint. But God has built something for us in our life, Josh. And he's made a plan and he's given us the blueprint. And if you can let your mind be still long enough, you will find out that you don't have to go to school to learn how to read the blueprint. All you got to do is pick up the B-I-B to the L-E. And you'll have all the instructions on reading the blueprint that you need. And the things that you'll build will be better than the things that you never saw before. Simply because you learned how to be still. And you move when God moves just like that. Have I got a witness? You've got to learn how to keep your mind still. You've got to also let your mind rest. <laughs> because if you don't let your mind rest, your mind can get tired too. Yes. Have I got a witness? Yes. Have you ever been to the place where your mind was so tired that things that made sense didn't make sense? Right. <laughs> you ever been there, Josh? You keep living a little while longer, you'll get there. Two plus two, you trying to figure out why two plus two is eight. Ah, because your mind is tired and they can't formulate and think of the things that are necessary for you to even get past that moment. But if you can learn how to be still. Hallelujah. Because the renewing of your mind is not just once. But God has to renew our minds daily because throughout the course of the day our minds move so much that it gets polluted with so many different things. But because of God's grace and mercy, our mind gets renewed if we can be still long enough for him to renew it. How many folks ain't got a Costco card? Move around and not pay it at the time it's due and see what you're going to buy. Because you can go shop. Yeah. But probably when you get to the cash register, <laughs> different story. They gonna say you need to pay your membership, dude. <laughs> Amen. You went in with a hundred dollars to buy some stuff. <laughs> your order came up to ninety six seventy six, but you forgot your membership was sixty nine dollars. <laughs> Something gotta go back. <laughs> You have to pay your membership for your membership to be renewed. Amen. So therefore, you've got to stay in a position of being still so that your membership in heaven can be renewed through the renewing of your mind. All right, all right. Have I got a witness? Right. While we're letting our mind rest, uh -huh. it allows for us to listen for God and his voice. Yes. And it allows for his presence to fill the space that we're in. If we can find ourselves resting in his bosom. Oh, the Bible says, come unto me all. You that are heavy laden. 
and I will give you rest. When your days are rough, Josh, come unto him, because he'll give you rest. When your mind is going crazy, come unto him, because he'll give you rest. When it seems as if things is just not lining up, come unto him, and give, he'll give you rest. If you have a day that you say, well, 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 what's going on? Remember that this is the day that he has made. Come unto him and let him give you rest. I need you to tell somebody, just go unto the Lord and get some rest. Because resting in God will keep you prepared for the battles of life. It'll have you at the place to where you won't fight this thing by yourself. It'll be at the place where you can be still. You can fight when you're supposed to fight. But you can be still when you're supposed to be still. And some of us are fighting when we're supposed to be still. Some of us are being still when we're supposed to be fighting. But if you can stay in the presence of God, you'll know when it's time to be still. And you'll know when it's time to fight. And not only that, but you'll also recognize how you're supposed to fight. Because sometimes you've got to know the weapon to use in the battle that you're fighting. And the best weapon that we have is this thing called praise. Have I got a witness? It doesn't matter how deep the battle is. In your being still, God helps develop a praise in you that will combat any battle that you're in. Be still. And your praise, it helps you to know God better. And the better you know God, the powerful your praise should be. And the powerful your praise is, the more effective you is when it's time to move. Have I got a witness? I'm not ready for that yet. She's moving me too fast. I still had a prayer or two I had to get to. My, 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 my. Listen here. Exodus 14 and 13 says this. But Moses said to the people, uh -huh. don't be afraid. Amen. And then look what he told them. Stand by and see. Yes. Yes. But it's hard to see what you're supposed to see if you're always moving. Amen. Mm. He says, stand by and see. The salvation of the Lord, yeah. which he will accomplish for you today. Uh -huh. For the Egyptians who you have seen today, yeah. you will see them again. You will not see them again forever. Yeah. So in other words, he came in yeah. and he told them this. He says, I know y'all are used to what you see. Yeah. I know y'all's mind have been conformed to what this is. Yeah. He said, but the God of all gods have sent me here to bring you from where you are, to take you to where you're supposed to be. He said that everybody's running around talking about what it is. If you read the story, it sits and it says that they were contemplating back and forth because they say at least here while we're in bondage, at least we get three hots and a cot. We get to eat every day. We got a roof over our head. I know we got to be, we, we got to be slaves and all that. But at least we are right where we is. But I come by to tell you when you understand that I'm of the royal priesthood, that I'm above and not beneath, that I'm the head and not the tail, that I'm the lender and not the borrower, that I'm first and not last. When you get that in your mind, you realize that bondage may be a pit stop, but it's not my destiny. And when God sent Moses back in there, he had to rally the people up and tell them, I need y'all to check this out. I want y'all to see what God will and wants to do. But the only way that you'll be able to see that is if you let your mind stop moving. If you let your mind stop wondering. If you stop speculating on what it is and start standing still so God can show you what it's supposed to be. He says, what you see right now, if you stand still, you won't see it like this no more. You won't see bondage. You won't see slavery. My God, that's letting you have three hots and a cop. He'll give you three gourmets and a king size bed. Have I got a witness in a mansion that he got for you? 
Have I got a witness? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 well, you don't have some time to get good to you. Yes, they get better to you now than even when God starts giving it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all forgive me. I'm sorry. It's good, dog. Oh, my goodness. Listen. Uh-huh. But, but, but Moses said, listen. And the reason why God used Moses uh-huh. was simply because Moses had the tenacity yeah. to be still long enough. Uh-huh. Because remember after he killed the Egyptians yeah. and he left and went to hang out with Jethro. Uh-huh. Jethro. Remember the Bible says that when God appeared to him yes. he was tending to Jethro's flock. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Which meant that he was out there with nobody but some cattle. Yeah. Mm. And it never told me, but in one place in the Bible, where one of them animals spoke. <laughs> and it wasn't Moses that the animal spoke to. Right. Have I got a witness? Yeah. But he was out there in the presence of God. Yeah. Yes. And he was still long enough to see when the bush yes. Yes, sir. was on fire but not burning. Amen. Have Amen. I got a witness? Oh, yeah. I can only imagine if Moses' mind had been racing and moving, uh-huh. he wouldn't have saw that the bush was burning but not being consumed by the fire. Yeah. He would have just saw that it was fire and tried to run to figure out how to put it out. Amen. But he was still enough, yeah. not just to recognize the fire, but he was still enough to hear the power of the voice coming from the bush that was burning. Yeah. Have I got a witness? Oh, yeah. So in other words, when we can be still long enough, uh-huh. we can hear God speak even through a concrete wall. Yes. Have I got a witness? And when God speaks to you, yes. he don't have to speak to you in the things that you know. Uh-huh. But God will speak to you in some ways that you never thought possible. Yes. Just to let you know that it's him yes. and it's him alone. Yes. And when, even when Moses was still, uh-huh. the Bible says that God spoke to him through the bush yes. that was sitting there for Moses to go back to tell the people that the same God that I recognized when I was standing still is the same God that wanted to show you his power and salvation. If you can only stand still, what am I trying to say? We can get further, mother, if we'll stand still long enough for God to move on our behalf. Stand still because he wants to set some Because he wants to position some people in place. Stand still. He wants to close some doors that can't be opened. Stand still. Because he wants to open up some doors that can't be closed. Stand still. Because he wants to elevate you above things that can't be elevated. Stand still. Because he wants to complete some things before they even get started. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Listen here. You've got to remember. And Moses told them, you've got to stand still. And I, I, remember, I remember reading that God says, that the Bible says, that when Moses listened to God, yeah. from his moment of standing still, because in his stand still moment, Josh, the Bible says that God told him exactly what to do. Amen. Moses even said, I can't speak clearly because I love these things called uncircumcised lips. And just in case you don't understand that, Mother Brian, Moses says, well, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't believe that that, that, that he's gonna understand because I stuck. So but God says, hold up, hold up. I got something for you. I'm gonna send your brother with you because he may not understand your stuttering, but your brother's gonna understand your stuttering, not because you're stuttering, but he got the same spirit that you got. So what I'm going to do is what I give you to give to him. I'm also gonna give it to your brother, and you might look like you're saying it, but I gave it to both of y'all, and so now. 
because Aaron was still, Aaron heard the message of the Lord and was able to convey it to Pharaoh. And now the people of Israel was able to see the salvation of God yeah. because the same man that kept them locked up, yeah. now they had to look and say, why did he let us go? Yeah. And he let them go without fighting. He let them go without trying to kill them. He let them go without any reservation. Isn't it amazing that when the salvation of the Lord shows up, he'll allow your enemies to become your footstool. He'll allow you to escape from the grasp of the enemy. And the Bible says that once they left, God let his salvation go with them. He didn't leave it in Egypt. And isn't it amazing that when God's salvation left Egypt, Pharaoh got mad and said, why did I let them boogers go? That was my help. That right there was my workers. Them right there was my prophet. And I let them go. He got together a form of people and went after them. But what Pharaoh didn't realize is the salvation of the Lord was still upon the children of Israel because somebody knew how to be still. And so as they went across this long desert highway and Pharaoh them came, the Bible says Moses was still enough to hear the Lord say, lift up your rod when you were faced with the Red Sea. And the Red Sea opened up. The children of Israel, they were still in a panic because they saw the Red Sea in front and Pharaoh and his army behind. But with the salvation of the Lord from the rising of the stack made the big obstacle open up for them not to go around it, not to swim on top of it, but to walk right Listen, 
You know why the people play the lottery? Mm. Because it's been proven that somebody gonna win. Yes, Amen. Amen. Yeah. So people go broke, yeah. believing that they the next somebody that's gonna win. Yeah. Right. Have I got a witness? Amen. And that people's mentality would be the same thing with knowing God. Yeah. Because if you look back uh -huh. over your life, yeah. and you think things over, mm. boy, yes. <laughs> Uh -huh. Have I got a witness? Yes, oh, yeah. oh. His old song says, as I look back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My soul can say <laughs> that I've truly been blessed. Yes. Yes. I've got a testimony. Yes. Yes. Have I got a witness? Yes. Yes. And what I found out is testimonies uh -huh. are the things that is a result of the things that God brought you from. Uh -huh. yes. 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 When you can testify about something that God has yes. done for you. Oh, yes. Then that means that you have an identity of who he is. Lord, yeah. And if you know who he is, yeah. and you got proof that he is who he said he is, and do what he said he can do. Yeah. Listen, some of us have a hard time believing it when it happens to somebody else. Yeah. But you can't deny that that rock cocaine was real. Come on here, and I got I got greedy because it got to get good. It was his money was fast, and it was, I didn't have to work hard. And I was man, let me tell you the truth. I formulated a plan so I wouldn't get caught. But I need you to know that I'm gonna formulate a plan with man not to get caught. But God sees everything. Come on, yeah. Yeah. And every once in a while, listen, because I knew who he was, I just happened to step to the side a little bit. Come on here. Yeah. 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 Come on here. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, you go ahead and take a vacation for a few years. I got some business to handle. I, I, I may be back if, if I don't get, become this boy. I'll be back. Come on, somebody. And so, so listen, so the, it, was, it was three separate occasions mm -hmm. that the Lord showed me his salvation. Amen. That he showed me his hand of mercy. Mm -hmm. yes. What do you mean? The very first time he showed me in Las Vegas, if you was at this time, if you had one jump, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that'd be one cigarette, one weed cigarette. Mm -hmm. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. <laughs> you were subject to a year in jail. Mm -hmm. There's no <laughs> what? What? Mm -hmm. The first time he showed me, I had just moved to Vegas. Mm -hmm. And I hooked up with this young man that was a nerd. Mm -hmm. But he was a White, blue, and yellow collar nerd. <laughs> so he broke in his neighbor's house mm. and took three big old trash bags full of weed. Mm. And he was, we gonna sell this. Mm. And me and my dumb self said, okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. I got a half a pound of weed in my sock. <laughs> took my cousin to the store. She in the store stealing. <laughs> so because she was a minor, we walked out the store together they took me too. Amen. <laughs> took me upstairs. Let me show you how good God is. He let the rookie frisk me. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of all of my, whatever I was going through, I still heard it. I was still. I was still. I was still. <laughs> I heard the Lord say, scrunch your socks down. <laughs> so I took my foot and I scrunched my socks down. When the man had checked me, all they did was lift it up my pants and saw my socks scrunched. So he said, oh, he got droopy socks and let my pants down. I walked away not being checked, because if he had called me, I'd have did about 10 years. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was number one. The next time it happened to me, I'm driving in my car, didn't know my tail light was out. Now I have a half an ounce of cocaine stuck up underneath my dashboard. Oh, Lord. And I get pulled over by a canine. Mm. Uh, he asked me for my license, mother. I pull my wallet out, take my license out. The first thing falls out was a straight edge razor. <laughs> the thing that you cut the cocaine up with. Uh -huh. He said, what is that? Mm. Boy, you talking about a joker that can think on his feet? I said, well, you know what? I'm always back and forth to California. My mama lived in California, so the drunk in my car. I got a bag of drunk in my car. It's got my straight hair razor. It's got my toothbrush. It's got my deodorant. It's got all... So when I got to leave, I ain't got to go home and pack a bag. I just take off. I ain't had nothing in the trunk. <laughs> Man said, okay, okay. Get your tail light fixed. I said, all right. Went home, sweating bullets. Mm, I still didn't learn, though. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The third time, Josh. Yes, sir. My buddy was driving my car. Uh -huh. One of my clients that I had wanted to take his kids to Disneyland. 
So he told me, he says, give me $300 worth for last year of the weekend. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you the title to my motorcycle. Mm -hmm. And if I don't pay you in three weeks, the motorcycle is yours. Amen. He signed the title over. I left it on the dashboard in my car. My friend had my car. I'm on the motorcycle. Mm -hmm. I go to tell him to get out of, out of the alley because the police was coming through. He was a known dope dealer. Mm -hmm. I wasn't. So when they came through, he said, we taking somebody to jail today. Mm -hmm. Exactly what they said. So he told them to get out of the car. I'm trying to turn the motorcycle around so I can get out the alley. I ain't got no motorcycle license. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a half an ounce of dope in the back, on the back bag, in the bag, on the back of the seat. Mm -hmm. I'm trying, he said, you get off the motorcycle and come over here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. We up against the car, I said, I'm going down today, guys. <laughs> they said, what? I said, it's dope on the bag. They said, what? At this time, my girlfriend decided she want to play on my beeper. You see, I got quiet. Everybody used a cell phone. They forgot about me. <laughs> but that's when people used to put the codes in the beeper. Uh -huh. and the number. She was putting hello, and I love you. And it's just going off, and the police is like, who blowing you up like that? You missing some deals? I know that my girlfriend, man. <laughs> so he took the beeper. I thought he took it, but he threw it in the car, right? He looking because he knew. He checking the car. He, check, he said, go check the motorcycle. Oh, I start sweating. I lost about 37 pounds sitting there watching the motorcycle. They took everything on the motorcycle away. They took everything off. The seat, they went on the radio. They went on the fair. They did everything. They never... He got to the back. The bag was sitting back here. He got to the back of the motorcycle. He looked at the bag and then went on to the other. It was like God put his hand down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He walked to the other side, took it apart. He came back to me. He said, you don't have a motorcycle license? I said, no. He said, how do I know that motorcycle was yours? I was still, y'all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Holy Spirit said, that the title's on the dashboard. Uh -huh. I forgot. I said, oh, the title to the bike is on the dashboard. So he looked at the title, it was signed over to me. So he says, okay, put the motorcycle back together, lock it up, get your license, and then you can move it. Hallelujah. This one I'm taking to jail because he got a warrant. Mm -hmm. So he takes my friend to jail. <laughs> I tell the buddy that was with him, you take my car over to my girl mama house. He said, what you going to do? I said, I'm going to walk across the street. I told a guy working for me, I said, Walked the bike across the street. It got dope on. <laughs> the police left. I got on that motorcycle. Flew to my house. Went in my stash. Flushed everything down. Right, right. <laughs> Said, no. <"All> right. <laughs> Say less. <laughs> Three days later, I was packed up leaving Las Vegas. <laughs> because listen to me. Had I not known him, I would have kept doing what I was doing and would have not noticed the signs that he was giving me to allow me to know that if I keep on going, that the same way he extends grace and mercy, he can pull the grace and mercy back. But in the midst of all of my tests and trials, in the midst of my walking away from him, he never ever walked away from me. I learned to know about him as a young man. And as I got older, I just strayed away because I wanted to fit in. But I come by to tell you that whatever's on the inside of you, if it's really there, it'll come up at the time that you need it the most. And as I, as I sat still long enough, I heard the Lord say, this is not the end, but it is the beginning. I never spent a day in jail doing the things that could have locked me up for a long time. It didn't take me to go to jail to accept my call. But I accepted my call because I knew how to be still. I was able to know no matter what I go through today, I look back to that time in 1989 and I think about when he kept me from dangers seen and unseen. How do I know? I was in the hospital one time with a bleeding ulcer that it seemed
now they were ready uh, to go assume the position. Uh, and then the Bible says, uh, he told them when you go to the battlefield, uh, don't go to fight, uh, just go to assume the position. Have I got a witness? Uh, if you still long enough, uh, God will tell you to get to the battlefield, brother. Uh, and he'll tell you, don't swing, uh, just stand still. Uh, and look what I'm about to do. Not knowing that God already worked it out. The Bible says that when they got to the place of the battle, that everybody that came against them had turned against one another and they killed each other. Isn't it amazing that being still paid off? Because when they got, when they, when they got, when they, when they got to the place where the battle took place, wasn't You got to learn how to wait. And when the Bible says, I will be exalted above the heathens, look back at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Because when they got to the place where Nebuchadnezzar says, I'm going to make this gold idol, and I want y'all to worship it. But the three Hebrew boys said, no, 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 brother. We only got one God. They went in the furnace, but they were still. They said, I'm going to go in. And if he saves us, okay, good. And if he doesn't save us, then okay, good. And Nebuchadnezzar looked into the fire. He said, I threw three in, but there's four moving around. I was still long enough to accept the presence of God that was inside the furnace with me. And instead of burning me up, he kept me protected. And the protection wasn't for the three Hebrew boys, but the protection was because God needed to be exalted above the heathen's hand. The Bible says, when they came out of the furnace, Nebuchadnezzar looked and he said, my, my, my. Yes. So your strength can be renewed. Yes. 
Wait like an eagle yeah. so you can fly above the thing. Because when God tells you it's okay, yes. it's going to be more than all right. Yes. And it ain't just for you, yes. but it's for some folk that's watching. Hallelujah. And they need to see how to wait. Yes. And see when God says, wait, be still, and see my salvation. Yes. Folks need to understand, salvation ain't just a thing that was accomplished when he... He went to the cross, died, went into the tomb, got up, and ascended back to heaven. But salvation is everything that's connected to us. Yes. His power, his grace, his mercy, everything. Yes. Amen. Amen. So every victory that we have is connected to salvation. Yes. Have I got a witness? Yes. Amen. I don't know about you. I was sore when I came up in here. All right. I'm feeling all right. All right. God is good, ain't he? God, God is good. Yes. I was sitting in my office last night after a long day of work, and he got to switching my message up. And I'm like, Lord. And it's amazing because I pre recorded this message for the other service, for the virtual service. And it's amazing how I'm asking myself now, Lord, why you didn't give me that kind of energy last night? Yeah. <laughs> because listen to me. If we do it the way we think we're supposed to do it, Amen. we miss how he wants it. Amen. Amen. And I don't know about you, but see that we needed to learn. Yes, we needed to know yes. that our waiting is not in vain. Amen. Cornerstone, our waiting is not in vain. Amen. God has something for us. Yes. But as long as we wait right, mm. this is going to happen. When he finished knocking over the stuff that ain't supposed to be there, yeah. when he finished, when he finished sweeping out the path of the things that causes us to stand, yeah. when he removes the people that's trying to take credit for what he's trying to do, yeah. when he opens up the doors that man says that will be open, Hallelujah. and when he closes the doors that man says, look, I put this there and nothing gonna happen, yeah. when he's done with all of that, yeah. he sends us up the way. Yeah. Folks, I'll, listen, folks, so gonna look back and wonder mm. how we got over. So I don't know about you, I just want you in your waiting, yes. stay prayed up, yes. in your waiting, yes. make sure that your worship life is good, yes. in your waiting, develop a praise, yes. and in your waiting, reminisce of the things he brought you from, yes. because that's a builder of your faith, yes. and we want our faith to go from the shallow end, mm. to go to the bottomless pit, we want our faith to be so deep, yes. That you'll never be able to reach the bottom. Because when God knows that our faith is like that, yes. He knows that nothing can move us because we trust in Him for all things. Yes. Amen. 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 In our human side, yes, we're concerned about this war. Yes. We're concerned about things that could happen. Yes. But the last time I checked, the Bible says mm. that God got the final say. I've been reassured that nothing in this world can happen unless it's first got the permission of the Lord. Yes, hallelujah. And if God gave the permission for it to happen, yeah. that means he's already equipped us to handle what's going to happen. Right, right. Amen? Yes. So let us keep our hope in glory. Yes. Knowing that God is by everything and all that we need. Yes. Amen? Amen? Lord Jesus, I'm sweating up in here. Amen. I need some water. Right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. Oh God, we thank you. Thank you. For what you have shared with us today. Yes. We thank you that your spirit is here with us. Yes. We thank you all the more, Father God, that in our waiting you said that you would show up. Yes. That you would allow us to feel your presence. Yes. That you would speak to us. That not only will you speak to us, God, but you will let us identify your voice no matter where we are or what we're yes. doing. Because you said with your people, mm. your sheep, yes. know your voice. Yes. Now they will not follow. Mm. So God, we're asking you to give us the sense to know your voice even more. To feel your presence even more. In our waiting, Father God, show us how to serve you better in the midst of our waiting. Yes, Lord. Show us how, Father God, to reflect back to the things that you brought us through yes. over the years. 
You've left us on this earth long enough for us to have enough evidence that you are still God. Yes, yes, Lord. That you are still working. Yes. And that you still love us beyond yes. us. So we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We ask you to continue to have your way in our lives. Yes, yes. And while all heads are bowed and all eyes are closed, this is a time where somebody may want to rededicate your life or accept God for the first time. If that's you, then simply raise your hand. Or you may be someone that want to rededicate your life. If that's you, just raise your hand. Amen. Then the second call is if you want to be a member of this church or a member of, a member, a member of Cornerstone, Amen. just raise your hand. Amen. Because it may be two churches with two names. It may be, it may be churches with two names, but we are still one church. Amen. 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 Fellowship together, yes. serving God in every opportunity that we can. Amen. If that's you, just raise your hand. Amen. As I see, there's none, but there's still yet room at the cross. Yes. Amen. God, we thank you, we honor you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. It's time to prepare for our love. Y'all pray with me. Because God be willing. God be willing. On this coming up Saturday. I'll be 57 years around the moon. Around the sun. Amen. Amen. I'm asking him to continue to let me be like the eagle. Yes. Let me be 57, 67, 77, but still look like a young man. Yes. yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now I'm just praying that my body can feel young too. <laughs> Amen. Y'all be in prayer. I have not, I pushed our trip back, so we won't be doing my uh, out of the country birthday trip until October. I'm sorry, August. I told my wife, I said, folks, we're being slow and making us have to pay more money waiting on them. So I said, nah, instead of paying more money to do the same thing we were supposed to do, trip right up on up a thousand dollars. I said, that was my spending money. <laughs> so I said, let's go in, in August, and then let's go stay ten days instead of five. Amen. So amen. So we're gonna extend our vacation in, our, in, in October, in August, and so uh, that means that I'll be in the city. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Come on, let us prepare. Let us give. If we can be blessed and ready to go. Can you come for me to love our kids, please? Love. 